Hey friends, I have something so exciting to share with you guys today. Um, we just recently made some pretty big changes in our kitchen and I thought I would take you guys along, show you the process and share with you what we chose for our new kitchen countertop. So I'm really, really excited to share this whole process with you guys. It was very nerve-wracking. <laughs> I've never done anything like this before, um, apart from helping some friends with their kitchen, but nothing like this for my own. So I just wanted to take you guys along with me, show you what we chose, but I thought it might be beneficial to kind of show you what our kitchen looked like when we first moved into this home over 10 years ago. So this is 2012. We were so blessed to to have almost a brand new kitchen. The previous owners completely renovated. They put in brand new shaker style cabinets and you can see that the countertops are a black Corian countertop. It's kind of like a man-made material and we had a slate flooring. So within just a couple of years of moving into the home, we made a lot of changes. This is when I first started my blog. This is what our kitchen looked like. I changed out the hardware on the cabinets, Mike installed subway tile, we put some corbels under the cabinets to make them look a little bit more like sort of built in, um, changed out the faucet over the sink and that was about it. Oh, we also installed a uh, faux stone wall in our kitchen using some leftover air stone that we had from our fireplace. And I don't know if you caught it, but we had some faux beams on the ceiling as well. So within just a couple of years, we'd made quite, um, quite a few changes. But back in 2020, we were able to work with Vintage Tub and Bath and Signature Hardware to get this gorgeous new high back sink installed. My husband installed it himself, cut the Corian countertops. We got this beautiful copper faucet. And he put new casings around the windows and it really just changed the entire look of our kitchen. Mike also installed these faux like window grids uh, onto our windows. I have blog posts about all of these projects, by the way. Um, but just little by little, we started tackling these projects in our kitchen. He built out the window over by the stone wall as well. And then I had this crazy idea to have him hide our dishwasher. We had this beautiful new sink that looked so vintage and I didn't like the stainless steel dishwasher. So my husband got super creative and was able to hide the entire thing. And this is probably one of my favorite projects we've ever done. It turned out so beautiful. It looks like a piece of furniture in there, in there now. Um, and so this led me to another idea of hiding the side of our refrigerator. It was just plastic gray. And I thought, is there anything we can do to sort of hide the side of this? And Mike used those same materials and was able to attach them the same wood that he used on the dishwasher. It was like a thin paneling. And I wrote a whole blog post about it. This is the Pinterest image that I made. And you can see the fridge, what it looked like compared to what it looks like now with this beautiful paneling on the side. So right around the same time that we hid the side of our fridge, we also decided to replace all of those faux beams on the ceiling with real ones. We had a friend that was burning down her barn and we went in there and we were able to salvage a bunch of those beams and cut them down. I have a whole blog post about this as well. And we used them in our kitchen and in our bedroom. We also put one above the stove and replaced the microwave with this awesome beam. And uh, they just turned out so beautiful in our kitchen. They added so much character. I love that they came from a local barn. Uh, we also were able to work with Ilve and they sent us this vintage inspired stove that really uh, was so beautiful in our kitchen. It was like a stainless steel finish. And this is what our kitchen looked like for a couple of years, two, three years. Um, it was beautiful and then we had some complications with our stove and Ilve sent us a new stove that was blue because they didn't have any stainless steel stoves available. 
I have a whole YouTube video about the blue stove if you want to go watch it, but basically it ended up being sort of a happy accident. We really love the blue now. We feel like it looks much more antique in our kitchen. And this sort of led to us purchasing different hardware for the cabinets, some antique brass poles off of Etsy. And so here we are today at K2 Stoneworks. We were so pleased with K2 Stoneworks. They were wonderful to work with. They even had these slabs sent from another warehouse closer to where I live so that I could go look at them in person, which was so kind. And the slabs that we ended up going with are actually honed granite. And the reason why we decided to go with the honed granite is because I have always loved soapstone. It's so beautiful, but it's very expensive and it does require a lot of upkeep. And I had actually heard from my friend Sarah over at Grace in My Space about the idea of using honed granite instead of soapstone. She actually has a whole blog post about it. So that's what we ended up going with. Not only is granite extremely durable, it's also very affordable. And so it just seemed like a no-brainer for our kitchen. They came like the very next week and took a ton of photos to measure for the new countertops. We had to remove everything, of course, and um, they were very meticulous in getting their measurements and literally not even a week later, this all happened so fast. I couldn't believe how quickly it happened, but not even a week later, they called and said they had an opening. They'd love to come install them. And you'll see here, my husband is removing the old countertops himself. This saved us a ton of money. And really a lot of you might be watching this thinking these countertops are perfectly fine. And I get it, they were perfectly fine as a frugal person. Um, this is why it took me 10 years to replace these because there's really nothing wrong with them apart from the fact that I just didn't love them. They scratched very easily. I mean, you would slide a gallon of milk across the countertop and it would scratch the counters. And they were very, very shiny and glossy. And of course, you guys know I love sort of that old world look. And I just had always loved and wanted stone in my kitchen, something natural. This is like an acrylic resin type material. So anyways, we removed them ourselves and the following day we kind of prepped for the new countertops. We moved everything out of the way. Here's a look at the kitchen with no countertops. You can see that old orange paint <laughs> and uh, got the fridge moved out of the way and everything. So again, that saved us a lot of money by removing them ourselves. Unfortunately, we were hit with a winter storm advisory the day that they came. I felt so bad. My husband was out there trying to help shovel snow, but the installers were so sweet and kind and they put down, you know, lots of uh, drop cloths so that they weren't tracking snow through the house, which was just something I appreciated. But the countertops went in so smoothly from the moment I saw the first piece go in. I was so excited and you can see here my husband's helping to uh, continue to shovel snow for them. But here is a look at the countertops after they left. So you can see these countertops are a little bit more thin than the Corian was. And so because of that, my husband is going to fill in that gap with grout. It's just like a quarter of an inch, but they are so beautiful. I am absolutely in love with them. At first, I was a little nervous because they just, from far away, it doesn't look like a huge change, right? It's like, okay, you replace black countertops with black countertops. But of course, as someone who can really appreciate detail, I was just so excited. And really, I couldn't believe how affordable these were. I guess I had it in my mind that countertops were just so expensive and it really wasn't that expensive. So you can see here the next day, Mike just uh, filling that gap with grout and it really, you can barely tell, it turned out absolutely beautiful. We had gone with back and forth with the option of building up the cabinets to make up for that gap, but after seeing how small of a gap it was, we just decided to go ahead and grout 
that little line uh, above the counters and it really turned out beautiful. Mike did a great job as usual and so that saved us a lot of money as well because building up the counter or building up the cabinets would have been like an additional $300. So after we uh, did all the grouting and caulking, I went ahead and did some painting touch-ups as well, just where the wall needed to be caulked and repainted. The color of our kitchen walls is called Swiss Coffee. It's a true value paint color, by the way. Uh, but I also used this opportunity to paint the bottom of my cabinets. I know this sounds crazy, but I don't know if you've ever looked at the bottom of your upper cabinets, but they can kind of get gross after a while. And I had scrubbed these, but they just really needed to be painted. I also actually, since the whole countertop was clear, I decided to give the backsplash a really good scrub down and it desperately needed it. So I'm glad I had the opportunity to do that as well. So just one of my little scrub brushes with the more harsh bristles was perfect for the job. I just used some soap and water and my Norwex rags and uh, got it nice and sparkling clean. And then once all of the cleaning was done, it was time to just kind of wipe down all of the countertops which I'm still just pinching myself because they're so pretty, um, and then start to bring in decor. And it was kind of one of those things where I just decided to put everything back kind of where it was. I know I'm probably going to end up playing with this decor over time just because the new countertops, they... I don't know, they're so beautiful that I almost feel like you don't need as much on the counters. But for right now, we're just kind of placing everything back where it was. And I am just loving the way that some of my antiques and Crocs look with these counters. It's just a really beautiful combination. And I forgot to mention, by the way, that if these countertops look darker today than they did out in the stone yard, that is because they put a sealer on the granite. Um, the installers told me that it's actually uh, like a very, it's supposed to last for quite a while, I think, I think like 10 years, um, but it just protects the countertops and it does also slightly darken the color. So they looked a little bit more gray out in the stone yard, but here in my kitchen they are definitely darker, but I think all of the little bits of white and the veining are still absolutely beautiful and I think that they show up even more now that the countertops are sealed. So um, here I am just kind of placing all of my little pieces back into the kitchen. Some of the larger like breadboards that I had sitting out hiding the countertops before, I didn't put those back in the kitchen. But you can see I have everything out on my dining room table. It was like shopping from a store or something, trying to pick out what I wanted to use, what I wanted to put back in the kitchen and just sort of playing around with the new countertops. It was a lot of fun. I always enjoy uh, an afternoon like this where I can just sort of play around with decor and I don't know, what do you guys think? I'm really loving them in here. I love, I love them so much more than the old countertops, of course. I think they look really beautiful with the brass hardware. I do think that and I'm going to show you this in a second. I do think that the new countertops, now that they are in, I have realized that they do not go at all with the floors. And I'll talk about that in a second. One thing that's different is the piece behind the stove is a little bit thinner than the other piece of countertop we had sitting back there. So I'm still trying to figure out if I want to put my oils back there. But Here's just a little look at how everything came together. Um, I think that they are truly so beautiful and I'm just excited to share them with you. I'm sorry about the dishes in the sink. <laughs> I was just kind of cleaning and you can see here in a little bit, you'll catch the vacuum uh, in the background as well. But this just gives you a little close up of what they look like and we're just so in love with them.
So on this side of the stove, I had a little wooden cabinet here that I purchased at um, like an antique fair. Um, it's beautiful, here it is. But I've always felt like it was a little bit too red and actually in this lighting, it doesn't look like orangey or red at all. <laughs> I was editing this video and thinking, goodness, this doesn't even look red here. But once you see it in my kitchen, probably because the lights are on in there all the time, it does read a little bit warm. So I thought I would give it a try, maybe like the scrubbing technique that I've used in the past with just soap and water to see if any orange comes off on my scrubber. And unfortunately, I could tell right away, I just, just because I've done this in the past with other furniture pieces, you can usually tell just by looking at the scrubber if orange is coming up and nothing really came off of this other than maybe some dirt. Um, so I went and got a piece of paper towel. That's usually the best test to see if you're removing any of that sort of orange residue. And yeah, unfortunately, I think I was just getting some dirt. I wasn't really getting a whole lot of um, warmth off of the piece. <laughs> so uh, I think this is maybe a summertime project, something that I'll have to take outside and sand with some sandpaper lightly. Um, if I want to get it a, a little bit lighter, you can see here what the color looks like, how it reads in the kitchen. Just a little bit more warm compared to like our beams and some of the breadboards. And that's why I've always wanted to change it. But I'm still not sure if I want to keep it here just because I don't want to hide too much of the new countertops. I think they're so beautiful, but it is such a fun piece and I love having it here. And it holds a lot of little kitchen uh like cookie cutters and things like that so I'm gonna put it back for now but um after I got the kitchen put back together we finally had the opportunity to kind of move the dining room back together as well put the table back <laughs> where it belongs since we had it moved out of the way for the installers and uh so now that I'm sort of cleaning this area up and trying to tidy things I'm going to talk to you about here in a minute about the kitchen floors. So what we have in our floors, you can't see it from this angle, but we, what we have is that it's like a Brazilian slate. It's very colorful. I'll show it to you in a moment. I've never loved it. I've never been in love with it. Um, I know a lot of people might think that it's beautiful, but it's always been something that, I don't know, I've just, if I could choose anything, it probably wouldn't be that. And now that we have the new countertops in, we can really sort of focus on what it is that we want to choose for our kitchen floors. Now from far away, it looks fine. Like this angle, you would, you'd be like, why do you need to change them? They look beautiful. It just looks like gray slate, uh, which I totally understand. And even as you step into the kitchen, it still doesn't look awful. It's, it, it, it's not like a horrible clashing of materials. I think it's just as you step further into the kitchen and you really look side by side and compare the flooring to the countertops, like this angle here, you can see they just don't go well together, at least in my opinion. It's too much going on. You've got all this different color in the slate, all this variation, all this texture, and then you've got you know, these beautiful honed granite countertops. And you can see this is a great angle here in front of the stove of all the colors in our slate. When you look a little bit closer, we've got reds and greens and purples and oranges and blues and yellows, literally so many colors. And like I said, from far away, you don't really see it. It's not until you're standing right there in the kitchen that you can see all the variation. And to me, it's just too much going on. It's too busy, especially with the stone accent wall that we have um, in the kitchen as well. So I'm trying to decide what to choose for these kitchen floors now that the countertops have been installed. I'm kind of leaning towards wood, like hardwoods. And this home was built in the 1930s. I'm sure you can see that kind of built up the kitchen. I'm sure linoleum had been put over the hardwoods at some point. And so then they put the cement board down and just laid slate flooring. Um, but my husband thinks that if we go with the hardwoods, he thinks he'll be able to remove that cement board as well as the tile. And it should, uh, it should be, hopefully, fingers crossed, it should be possible to do hardwoods in here. 
Um, but if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, you can see we have hardwoods throughout the home and we would just kind of continue those. Plus they are very affordable. We found a place that sells them very cheap. So anyways, that's kind of what we are trying to decide for this next step in the kitchen. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys, like hopefully this video just shows you that so often we think that a kitchen renovation has to happen all at once and we have to have like, you know, $40,000, $50,000 to, to do it. And it's just not true. Like you can make little changes over the course of many years as you're able to. Uh, we have never gone into debt with a house project. We have never charged anything. Like we always pay with cash. We do it as we're able to. So I hope this video was an encouragement and I can't wait to keep you guys posted and show you what we end up choosing for the kitchen floors. This room does get really, really cold in the winter time and I think that maybe by choosing wood flooring that might help to warm up the space both aesthetically and also on our cold little feet <laughs> in the winter time. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching today if you are new here i would love for you to hit that subscribe button and a huge huge thank you to k2 stoneworks for working with us on this project we cannot say enough good things about this awesome company if you are local i highly highly recommend using them they were wonderful to work with and we're just so excited about this big change in our kitchen so thank you guys so much for watching we will see you all next time Bye bye